Hello everyone. In this tutorial we're going to make an advanced infinite marquee effect. And by advanced I don't mean complicated or difficult, but one that has added JavaScript instead of just using vanilla CSS. And the reason we want JavaScript is so when, when we scroll, this changes direction and it also speeds up the animation as you can tell. Now I always say it's a really popular effect, so I want to show you on a website called Atlas Digital that uses this effect and this one side of the day I'm gonna assume you have basic knowledge of how to make a regular marquee effect for this tutorial but if you don't I want to briefly go down so essentially you have one container here and let me show you and as one is animating out of the screen one is animating in the screen as you can see from here so let me expand this a little bit. This one is animating out while this one is animating in. And then eventually when this is completely out and the user can't see it anymore, it'll start right back from the start. So when it goes back in again, um, it has this infinite appearance effect. So now there's a lot of ways to do this. You can use two, um, two or more containers, or you can just use one solid container and as soon as this hits here you just start it at the end again like this now the problem with using one container only is you have to make sure that the second half ends exactly how the first one will begin so for example if if the start starts like this then when you get to the end you have to make sure this container also ends in the same rotation. So when you replace it back to the start, they won't notice a jump between the animations. So that's why it's more popular to use two or more containers. You have a lot more flexibility here and it doesn't have to be um, identical. So let's go over the starter files. And as you can see, we have our major loop container. And inside we have two items that will be individually animating. So you can think this first item container as this red one here, and the second item container as this gray one here. And if you would only animate the loop container, then you would be doing this approach. And we're not going to be doing that. We're going to animate one of them and then replace that other one and animate them individually, as you can see from here. This is the, pretty much the same thing, except instead of just having text in, inside, um, I have a bunch of images, so it kind of looks more like this, you know, each one of these are images. But uh, again, um, we're only focusing on this because this is, works exactly the same as this. This just has a different kind of content inside. And if we take a look at the CSS, you can see we have overflow hidden. So the hero section you can just think is this white box. And the reason we have overflow hidden is so when it overflows, the user can't have a horizontal scroll bar to see it go outside, um, so it'll just be invisible to them like this. And then we have to have no wrap since we're using text and no wrap basically just means it doesn't wrap the text onto the next line. And this is just to make it responsive, so nine font size, view port width. And then we have um, positioning the item absolute so they're on top of each other. So I'll simulate that, they're both on there right now. Now you can hard code a CSS value to make the second item div right here. But since we're animating it anyway, um, I'm just gonna leave that as a JavaScript parameter and um, input a translation of negative 100 for this one. So once we add the JavaScript, it'll start like this and play the animation from here. But currently we just have this right now for both the gallery and the text right here. So let's start on our JavaScript by creating the class of looping element. Inside of this class, what I want is the constructor. And the parameters we want is the DOM element itself will pass in from a query selector, the current translation, and speed. And uh, current translation is what I meant previously by since they're both on top of each other right now 
and we want the second one to have negative 100. This is where we pass it in, and speed is, well, that's just speed. So obviously we want to set our class variables equal to our parameters. And then we need our looping data, our linear interpolation. And we need a current position, which we will update to pass in as translate x, so it translates x. And then we want a target, which we'll also add to and manipulate. So the linear interpolation can go from the current value to the target value. And this will also be dot current translation. And then we need an ease or a lerping factor, whatever you want to call it. So if you don't know what linear interpolation is, um, basically the function that we create, um, it has a, a current position and it'll move increasingly closer to your target position. Our current position will get closer and closer to the target, but if we keep pushing away the target, it's gonna keep on going farther and farther and make that really smooth um, effect that we want. So let's create our looping function. So I'm gonna call it loop func, and it takes a current, a target, and an ease value. Now I usually call it lerping factor, but um, a lot of people call it ease, so I'll do that. And lerp.current is basically how much that we want to uh, translate our items. So that's why I'm setting it equal to whatever is returned by our lerping function. Target times ease. Cool. So then we can have an animate function, and this will contain all the animation logic that we want to do. So Obviously, we want to update our target, so um, we have the movement. So the first thing we want to do is update the target, target, and I'll just plus equal that to this dot speed that we'll have to pass in. Then we want to do the lerping function, so we can get our, so we can set the the current position. So we want to do this dot lerp dot current for the current this dot lerp dot target and this dot lerp this dot lerp dot ease and this dot lerp dot ease this dot current target are all here and great so now we can have our translation so grab the element that we pass in style transform and I want to translate it, so I'll use a string literal here, translate x, and then I need my string literal, and this dollar dot current, and we want it percentage, and save that. Now the last thing we need is our animation, uh, our render function, which will call this dot animate, so it plays on each frame. And then we need our actual request animation frame, which will request an, uh, a frame on every available frame. And we just want to infinitely call it itself. So we can do it like that. So that should be good enough to have uh, movement. Now what we actually need to do is select our elements. So select the elements equal query selector all, and there were they had a class title of item, so that's what I'm doing here. And then we can create a new looping item, um, new looping element, and uh, the first one will be zero. There'll be no translation on it, and I'll set a speed of 0 0.08. Actually, I'll make it 0 0.5 so it's faster, and we can see it. And then for the second one, we want it to be negative 100. So originally they were on top of each other, but now we set the second element to negative 100. So right now it's off the screen, but um, it's right here. Cool. So if I save this, nothing is running. And that's because I didn't call this dot render in the constructor. Additionally, I also made a typo here. I forgot to put a left parentheses there. And now you can see it's working. It's really fast, but you can change the speed. And as you can tell, it's not resetting, it's just infinitely adding to the, um, to the right. Um, 
So if I go to the, the inspect tool here, elements, go into our hero section, loop container, you can see it's just translating infinitely positive. So we need to reset that. I'm going to put this in its own function for the forward, and I'll call it forward. Whoops, forward, and put it in here. And um, basically, what we want to do here is we want to reset it when it goes forward. So if the target is greater than 100, so why 100? And the reason we want it greater than 100, we want to reset it is because when the target is 100, that means that the current translation will soon be 100 as well. So um, when this red one is here, completely off the screen and no one can see it, it'll have a translation X of 100%, right? And from here, we want to put it right back at the start, which is negative 100%. So how can we do that? Well, we can set this dot current dot this lerp dot current, sorry, which is our current translation x minus equals a hundred times two, right? Because it's currently translated at a hundred x to the right. So if we want to put it at negative hundred, we have to subtract a um, hundred minus two hundred, which is negative hundred. Now, we also have to set the target subtracting to this as well. Because if we don't, it'll just speed right back up to um, the target, which is going to be 100, 200, whatever. So I'm going to control all down and target. So this could be, this wouldn't actually be exactly negative 100. It would probably be like negative 99% or something. And this would probably be like negative 98% or something. So when you lerp between the two values, you know, you're going to keep going up until you hit 100 again. So awesome. Now we can get the backward one. And all we have to do is flip the signs. So I'll call this backward, backward, and this dot lerp dot target minus equal the speed instead. And then we can flip this negative 100 and then flip these as well. Because sometimes maybe you want it to wait a little bit longer, maybe you don't want it 100%, or maybe your containers are sized differently, so 100% isn't off the screen, maybe it's 200%, um, maybe it's it's too fast, 100% um, is too far, so maybe you want it 70% to reset, and so on and so forth. And then um, this is why I'll change these. I'll hold Alt and double click on them to select them. And I'll call it this dot metric, so we have more flexibility. And I'll set this dot metric equal 100. I forgot to delete this when I was editing the code, so I'll just add this. And uh, yeah, so that's for 100. Okay, so now we actually need to determine our direction that we're scrolling. So I'll do this dot direction equals false. Well, I'll set it to true. And I'll put the scroll top, which we need to compare to later, equals zero for the scroll event. So if direction is true, we want to make things animate forward or to the right. And if it's false, we want to make it go to the left, or I call it backwards. You can call this right and forward. Actually, maybe it'll make more sense if we call it right and left. So let's do that. And in our anime function if um, this dot direction ternary operator if it's true then we wanted this dot right otherwise we wanted this dot left awesome and because it's true it's going right right now and as you can see it's working but when I scroll up and down it's not changing its direction and maybe you want it like this where you don't have to scroll, but let's continue. So this dot events and this function will just add the scroll event. So event events and a window dot event listener on scroll. Let's determine the direction of the scroll. And we can do that by setting um, a dummy variable to the uh, 
the Windows page Y offset. So page Y offset. And basically this will return um, the, the offset on the scroll. So if I do console.log direction and go in here, go to console, you can see when I scroll down, when I scroll to the top, it's zero. And when I scroll down to the farthest bottom, it's 500. And it would work as far as possible. So we can use that. So if direction is greater than this dot scroll top, which we set to zero, then we know that we're, going, we're scrolling down. So output this dot direction equals true. So we want this to go to the right. And if it's not, then we'll set it to the false. We need to update this dot scroll top because it's not always going to be zero. It's going to be at the last place direction was, so we can compare the new direction to the last place um, the previous direction was at. So this dot scroll top equals direction. Turn the area operator. If it's less than or equal to zero, just set it to zero. So we just set it to zero. Otherwise, set it to direction. And now it should work fine. So when I scroll up, it starts going to the left. And when I scroll up, it goes to the right. Yep, and that works. So now all we have to do, well, on scroll, we just do this dot look dot target and plus equal this dot speed. Now you can see when I scroll down, it speeds up at the factor of the speed. And if you want to make it faster, well, all you have to do is multiply it. And now you can see, wow, it's it's a lot faster when I speed it up. And here, instead of plus, we just subtract. And now you can see you have it working. So that's pretty much all for this effect. Um, and I just want to give you some ideas that once you understand how to do this, some of the other things that you can do. So instead of, you know, you can make it vertical instead of horizontal, you know, infinite as you scroll speeds up and so on and so forth. Here you can have um, text, you can translate the Y instead of just the X. And, you, you know, you can make them go in circles, you can have hidden div containers that hide and go around text, um, you can have rotation. So I actually put that in the CSS. You just have to make sure that your container is big enough um, so the overflow won't be hidden. Um, so I I went into the wrong, the wrong, it should be here. And you can see it's here. Just beware that uh, your container is big enough Otherwise, it will overflow and it'll start um, chopping in here. There's a lot you can do. This is not limited um, at all. I just wanted to give some insights on what else to, you could do from here. And definitely consider making your own um, JavaScript uh, library for this. So all you have to do from here is um, just add a bunch of if statements, um, some other parameters you want. So you can make your own library and you don't have to rely on other people's code. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.